Welcome. Welcome to Real Estate Radio Power Investing, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate investing. Your host, Tom K. Wilson, provides you with insight and guidance from his years of experience as a successful real estate entrepreneur on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate, and much more. Now, here's your host for Real Estate Radio Power Investing, Tom K. Wilson. Thanks for tuning in our Real Estate Radio Power Investing program where we empower you with the education to maximize your investing success. We're broadcasting from our Wilson Investment Properties headquarters in Silicon Valley. I'm Tom K. Wilson, your host for this weekly program on real estate investing. If you can't make the live show, you can catch our broad podcast on TomWilsonProperties.com or on iTunes or on YouTube. And you can go to TomWilsonProperties.com for our newsletter on economics and real estate. You can also uh, get access to our high return, high quality turnkey multifamily and commercial syndications where it's as 50K a share. And we always welcome your questions and are glad to um, answer uh, any questions that you have and take your suggestions on what guest or subject you'd like us to cover next. We're forcing today to have back on our program Tom Wheelwright, CPA and CEO of WealthAbility. He's the uh, Rich Dad advisor and personal advisor to uh, Kim and Robert Kiyosaki. We've had the pleasure of knowing him for many, many years and uh, introduced uh, to him through uh, the real estate guys. He's known for making taxes fun. I know that's an oxymoron, easy and understandable. And he specializes in helping entrepreneurs and investors build wealth through practical and strategic ways that permanently reduce taxes. He's best-selling offer of tax-free wealth, and he's... Um, host of the Wealth Ability Show. He's been featured on Accounting Today, The Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Investors Daily, Consumer Reports, Fox and Friends, ABC, and many others. So, Tom, it's uh, what a pleasure to have you back on the program. Uh, it's always good to be here, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, so, Tom, let's uh, let's start off with, uh, I guess, the, the new tax uh, law and uh, how it impacts uh, what people should do and what are some of the best and, and worst things for real estate investors from the new tax law. Well, there's not much bad for real estate. Well, that's good news. In, in the not, new many, tax law. not many people assume that. You, you know, I was in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, the last time there was major tax reform in 1986 when real estate got hit hard. So when we got the passive loss rules. And uh, it's like, this was like complete opposite because real estate got major, major tax benefits. I mean, just the bonus depreciation alone is unbelievable. I mean, seriously, if anybody was, was, was wondering, should I, should I invest in real estate and was wondering about the tax benefits, boy, they shouldn't be wondering anymore because they're, un, they're, they're really remarkable. Well, that's great to all real estate investors, and uh, especially in light of faltering uh, securities derivatives markets, uh, it certainly certainly is good news to those who've been maybe on the fence or thinking about increasing their real estate portfolio. What are uh, so? Uh, can you go into some detail? And uh, yeah, of course, I, I, I'd love to. So, first of all, we have bonus depreciation. So, we're the, um, to my knowledge, we're the only country in the world that allows um, a first-year write-off of, um, of, of, of used real estate. I mean, <laughs> think about it. We're actually one of the few countries in the world that allow a write-off of used real estate at all. Okay, most countries, it's only the, the, uh, the, the original build that gets to be written off. Um, but basically what happens is, is if you think about your real estate, you buy a piece of property, you, you, you buy the land, you know, no write-off for that, of course. You buy the building that, if you're in multifamily, is going to be, you know, you're going to get about 3.5% a year, or, or if commercial, about 2.5% a year. But what most people don't realize is that you also bought two other major um, categories of items. You bought the contents of the real estate, so all the cabinetry and the window coverings and the flooring and lighting and all of that kind of stuff, and you bought land improvements. So you bought outdoor lighting, landscaping, um, fencing, etc. And these latter two, under the bonus depreciation rules, they can be written off in year one. 
So we actually have done some comparisons, and if you do what we call a cost segregation, where you have a professional come in and allocate the cost between those four categories, typically on a multifamily, you're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 percent of your purchase price is going to be deductible in the first year. Wow. Now, Tom, I got to ask you: there, are some, you know, some listeners or a lot of our listeners have uh, kind of converted over to investing with us in multifam and commercial and so forth. Uh, is this something cost segregation? Something that uh, can apply to to houses, one to fours as well, or is that um, not- it, it applies to any any real estate that's either rented out or used in a, in a business? Okay. So it applies to everything except your personal residence. Okay, and. Um, is this something that the uh, is a flag to the IRS, or is this uh, strictly, um, you know, uh, t- totally bona fide? No, not only is it bona fide, it's actually technically required by the t- by the um, Internal hmm. Revenue Code. So, you're you're supposed to break out your real estate into these categories. That's what the law says. Of course, the IRS says if you want to just put it to building and land, we're okay with that because that's less depreciation. Mm-hmm. But there's um, contrary to what. Some people, you know, I've, I've heard people say there's, it's actually incorrect to not do a cost segregation. So wow. when you're doing that, you're actually doing it the right way. Okay. All right. Go ahead. What, uh, so what else in addition to the cost segregation? So, so, you know, let's say, so this, by the way, this applies as of September 27th, 2017. So if you... By the way, if you bought a new a, a property at the end of 2017 and you didn't take this, you might want to revisit it because you've got a little bit of time. Uh, if you if you if you if you filed your tax return late, you you might still have a little bit of time to go back and correct that. Hmm. You don't have to take bonus depreciation. You can take regular depreciation, and um, but even then, cost segregation is good. But it's nice because you get a you get an option here. So when you're preparing a tax return. Let's say that you don't need all that depreciation. Let's say that, I mean, for example, if you did a million-dollar property and you put $250,000 down on yep. that million-dollar property, let's say you did a 75% loan to value, yep. you're probably, your, your deduction is probably going to be closer to 300000 So more than your actual investment is what your deduction is going to be that first year if okay. you take full advantage of bonus depreciation. Mm-hmm. So you may not want that much. It may be that that's so much that it wipes out all of your tax liability and then some. So you may decide, I'm going to just take some bonus depreciation and some I'm just going to depreciate over normal, useful lives. And if and you, you can't can use all that. of it. And that's, that's one of the great that, – that's why having a, a tax return preparer who understands the real estate rules and understands real estate taxation becomes so important to you. If you can't use all the depreciation, can you carry it forward in the future? You can um, realizing that you're 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 taking depreciation against very low tax rates at that point, okay? Because remember, we all have ten percent brackets. We all have a twenty four thousand dollar. If you're married, you've got a twenty four thousand dollar standard exemption. You've got your itemized deductions. So you tend to lose a lot if you take too much. Mm-hmm. And and what what's better is to actually figure out what the sweet spot is for paying a little bit of tax and then having that depreciation mm-hmm. available in, mm-hmm. at higher tax rates in future years. Okay, yeah, a, a, a relative analysis comparison. Right. Um, what are some of the long-term consequences, trends you see in the outcome of the new tax law? Well, <laughs> the, long, the, 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 the long-term things, you know, bonus depreciation is not long-term. I mean, it it's, um, starts going away in 2022. Um, 2023 okay. starts going away. So, in if if we don't get you know a permanent change or it doesn't get extended, then that bonus depreciation is going to be gone, and that's going to be something people are going to miss. Right? Mm-hmm. They're going to miss out on that. Yep. Um, like kind exchanges is actually there was a change this year. The 1031 rules now it only applies to real estate. So it used to apply to cars. For example, you traded in your business car on a new car. That was a like-kind exchange, and it wasn't subject to tax when you traded in your old car. Now it is. So 1031 now is restricted just to real estate? 
Well, it, it still applies to real estate, but it doesn't like it doesn't apply uh-huh. to your business car anymore. But it does apply to real estate. Okay. So we still have that like and exchange. But you know, one of the the long term, I think the really great long term benefits real for real estate is the opportunity zones. And I don't know if you've talked much on your show about opportunity zones, but opportunity zones are pretty much amazing because if you consider that in a 1031 exchange you have to buy a new property that's equal to or more than what you sold the old property for, right? Right. And you have only 45 days, like you're going to buy 180 days to close. So that can be tough, especially in a, you know, in a, in a really kind of a hot market like we're in right now. Yeah. The timing is actually, uh, I think tougher, right? You, uh, you don't of course have to deploy all the money. You get the tax benefit on whatever you deploy, but finding a, finding a replacement in a seller's market is pretty tough. It, it, it can be tough. Oh, by the way, you can find the property before you sell your old property. Yep, reverse. Okay, so you can do a reverse 1031. But Opportunity Zone, you only have to deploy the gain. So it's only the taxable gain that you have to actually put into the, the Opportunity Zone property. Okay. So if you had, if, if let's say you had a sold a $10 million project that had $2 million of gain, yep. you only have to roll, you don't have to roll a whole $10 million into a new property, you only have to roll $2 million. Mm-hmm. In order to uh, defer, in order the entire, to defer the tax, like you would under the entire 1031 tax. exchange, okay. so, so you can defer the tax on on that gain and any part of the gain. Okay, so you can decide. Well, I only want to roll 1.5 million, and I'll pay mm-hmm. tax on 500,000. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can do that too. And opportunity zones. You know what I like about opportunity zones is you're really looking at the up and coming areas anyway. That's what that's where the opportunity zones are, right? These sure. are redevelopment areas, yep. and so you know you're. You know, if you want to value buy, you know, you're more likely to get that in a redevelopment area than you would be in an already established area. Yep. So these are, I think, the opportunity zones um, are pretty amazing opportunity. They're going to be, that. This is, I think this is going to be the big new thing is the opportunity zone. Okay. We're going to take a pause here with Tom Wheelwright, CPA and CEO of WealthAbility and uh, Rich Dad Advisor. We'll be uh, right back in a moment on Real Estate Radio Power Investing. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Power Investing. Streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, visit TomWilsonProperties.com. That's TomWilsonProperties.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Power Investing, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back here to Real Estate Radio Power Investing. We have Tom Wheelwright today, a rich dad advisor, CPA, and CEO of WealthAbility. So, um, so Tom, what um, what are some of the year-end decisions and tax planning that people need to know? Well, they really ought to, first of all, you really need to know what your tax liability is. I mean, more than any other year in recent history, you ought to get a handle on what your tax liability is because there's actually some things you can do before the end of the year. I mean, remember, we no longer have our state tax deduction, right? It's limited to Mm -hmm. $10,000, which is a huge deal for those of you in California, (laughs) right? I mean, you're losing a lot of deduction there for your your home and for your your, um, income taxes. So we don't have that anymore. So no longer do we want to prepay our state taxes. I mean, that's out the window. So that's something if we do owe money, we might want to wait until, in fact, we definitely want to wait until January to make that um, tax payment. Okay. We, we may want to bunch some of our deductions. That's another thing that, that uh, can be really important. Because, what, do you, what do you mean by bunch? Well, what we have is we now we have a $24,000. If you're married, you have a $24,000 itemized deduction, uh, standard deduction, right? So if you're itemized deductions are only $22,000, you're really not getting any of them because you've already got a $24,000. It's the greater of the two. So what you do is you actually bunch your deductions in one year. So, for example, your charitable contributions. You ought to make your charitable contributions every other year because in one year then you'll use your standard deduction and in the other year you'll, use, you'll get itemized deductions. So that's what I mean by bunching those deductions. Mm-hmm. If you, to the extent you can bunch your itemized deductions, you're really better off doing that because, um, you know, a lot of people, frankly, a lot of people are not going to reach that twenty-four thousand dollar threshold. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That makes sense. 
Um, you, you know, there, there are some other things. I mean, here, here's, I'll, I'll give you another big one, which is if you've been thinking about buying a new car, you might want to think about doing it before the end of the year. Why is that? Um, because bonus depreciation applies to cars. So if you have a business automobile, let's say you're using, let's say you've got two cars, one you use personal, one you use 100% business. You've got a home office, so you don't have any commuting, and you use it 100% for business or your real estate. You buy a 6,000-pound SUV, or that's a full-size SUV or a pickup truck. Right. You get to deduct the full cost of that, even if you didn't put any money down and borrowed everything from the bank. Now, it used to be 25000 right? It, well, that was the 179 deduction. So this is now 179 deduction, still 25,000. But this is bonus depreciation. So this isn't doesn't have all the limitations of the 179 deduction. This is just 100% deductible as depreciation. So you're right. We used to have a limit of 25,000 for under section 179. Now we still have that limit under 179, but we nobody's using 179 because we have bonus depreciation, and it can be used. It can be used truck it can be new truck and even if you're buying a passenger car there's bonus depreciation you don't get you don't get the full cost of the car but there's still bonus depreciation first year of a new car uh, of a car you're going to you're going to deduct up to eighteen thousand dollars of that of that car and that's just a regular passenger car the very first year so if, if you're thinking about if you're thinking about buying a car or replacing a car you might want to think about doing that in, Dece- in December. Last three cars I've bought in the, uh, recent years have been uh, over 6,000 pounds. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I love it, but uh, I didn't know about this. That's great. We're going to take a pause here with Tom Wheelwright, CPA and CEO of WealthAbility and uh, Rich Dad Advisor. We'll be uh, right back in a moment on Real Estate Radio Power Investing. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Power Investing. Streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, visit TomWilsonProperties.com. That's TomWilsonProperties.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Power Investing, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back here to Real Estate Radio Power Investing. We have Tom Wheelwright today, a rich dad advisor, CPA, and CEO of WealthAbility. So, um... So, Tom, real estate deductions, how do you maximize the real estate deductions for the for this uh, year in planning? Well, uh, you know, ag- again, on your real estate, first thing is looking at depreciation. That's your big real estate deduction. That is your that that is your your big huge pop. And I would say, you know, if you're if you're if you're deciding, um, you know, you're close to closing on a property, you might want to look. Do you close in this year? Do you want to close in next year? Mm-hmm. Because you have to take the bonus depreciation in the year. You, you buy the building and place it in service, right? So you really want to do a little bit of analysis there of, okay, do I want to close? You know, if you're planning to close by the end of the year and you go, well, gee, I really don't need the depreciation this year, then maybe you push it to January. But if you go, wow, I'd really like to get rid of all of my tax, then let's buy it this year and get this huge write-off um, currently. So there are some things to do there. Of course, you know, you all always have that, opportunity to either prepay some expenses. You, now, when you pay your property taxes on your, your, your rental property, those are all deductible still. So the property tax deduction that went away on your itemized deductions did not go away on your, on your rental properties. Same with interest expense. You have a limitation on interest expense for your personal home, but you don't have a limitation on interest expense for a rental property. Mm-hmm. So you might... I mean, simple things like let's pay, you know, let's say our, our March or April's real estate taxes now if we want to accelerate the, that deduction. Or let's pay January's mortgage payments um, in December if we want to accelerate those inter- that, that interest expense. So we have, you know, this, it's just little timing things, but they all add up. So if you want to increase your deductions because you've had a really good year, you might want to consider, um, again, bunching a little bit of your deductions into 2018. Okay. Now, um, the uh, entertainment, uh, meals, that sort of thing went away, but uh, home, home office is uh, still there, right? Well, entertainment went away, meals did not. Okay. So business meals are still deductible like they used to be, 50%. Um, entertainment, 
no longer deductible. Okay. Uh, your home office, absolutely. In fact, now a home office is even more important than ever. Where is because that? if you consider that a, if you buy a new, if you if you if you were to buy a, a home, then you get bonus depreciation on your home office. Okay. And second of all, it, um, typically people, if if you you know if you have a home office then you're going to get a lot more car deduction. And when you've got that bonus depreciation, so consider that if you don't have a home office, that first trip of the day, even if it's to a rental property, is still a commute. And the last trip home is still a commute. Mm -hmm. So not having that home office means that you've got two trips a day that are going to be considered personal. Well, that could be half your travel during the day. Okay. So instead, if you have a home office, then your commute's, you know, 20 feet from your kitchen to your office, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a commute of 20 feet at the first of the day, and you have a commute of 20 feet at the end of the day. And then the rest of it, as long as it's, you know, otherwise used for business, is going to be business deduction, which means that you could, I've seen people actually increase their their business percentage from 60% to 90% or 100% simply by having a home office. Well, so it has a big effect on your car deduction. And uh, because of the the uh, commute factor. That's right. Okay. Because of the commute. And uh, the percent of your uh, car that's being used for business. That's right. Okay. All right. Um, so, and uh, to take advantage of this bonus depreciation, uh, do, you, uh, do you need to invest in real estate to take advantage of it? Well, uh, of course. I mean, um, bonus depreciation only applies to uh, investment real estate. It doesn't apply to your personal home. So, and what's really good, what's really great about it is you don't just get the deduction for what you've invested. You get the deduction for what the bank invested, right? So if you put in 250000 and the bank put in 750000 you get depreciation on the million. You don't get only depreciation on your 250000 Mm-hmm. So you, you, you get the leverage value. You get the leverage of not just you're not just leveraging your rents, you're leveraging your um, you're leveraging your tax benefits. Okay. All right, we're gonna take a pause here. We've got Tom Wheelwright on the program, Rich Dad advisor to uh, Robert and Kim Kiyosaki and uh, Rich Dad and the and CPA and CEO of Wealth Ability. We'll be right back on Real Estate Radio Power Investing. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Power Investing. Streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, visit TomWilsonProperties.com. That's TomWilsonProperties.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Power Investing, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Power Investing with Tom Wheelwright, CPA, CEO of WealthAbility, and uh, Rich Dad Advisor. Uh, Tom, if you're a commercial real estate investor, uh, should you uh, would it be advantageous to go some do some capital improvements like replacing your roof, HVAC, things like that? Uh, it, it might be because um, for the first year. And by the way, thanks for the softball, Tom. I really appreciate that. Okay. So, <laughs> um, you know, we we didn't used to get 179 deductions on things like HVAC and roofs. They were part of the building, and right. so we had to depreciate them. In commercial property, that's 39 years, so that's like only 2.5% a year. But under the new law, we now get to deduct um, as Section 179 deduction. Again, it's a little different than bonus depreciation, but 179 deduction, we get to deduct roofs. We get to deduct HVAC units. We get to deduct security and fire alarms. So. All of those are new. Only commercial property, not residential. So if somebody's living there, it doesn't qualify. But if it's a true commercial property like an office or industrial space, um, then you actually get to deduct these up front. Now, a roof normally, like I said, normally a new roof you're going to depreciate over 39 years. And instead to take it all in one year, that's a that's – a, that's I mean, major. roofs can be expensive, as you know. So yeah. that's a pretty big benefit. Our uh, Wilson Investment Property Syndications has a uh, – $10 million building, uh, office building in Plano. And uh, we've got a uh, hailstorm, and it costs us $1.5 million to replace that roof. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> and the HVACs that it nailed and so forth. Ho- so. Ho- hopefully the insurance company paid for all that. It sure did. 
It sure did. It's uh, yeah, we can cover that. Yep. Yeah, we don't have to re don't don't want to have to rely on uh, uh, deductions to uh, to cover that. That's sure. right. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the um, pass through deduction. There. The, the new 20% pass-through. Can you tell us what that is and talk to us about that? Yeah, so that's an interesting one for real estate because um, it, it actually, I think, be, because of bonus depreciation, it may apply. So basically what it is is 20% of your net income from your business. If you're a flow-through, so that means you're a partnership or an S-corporation, which you'd never be an S-corporation in, re in real estate investing, but you would be if you were a business. Um or a partnership, or even a sole proprietorship, all of those, um, all of those that that pass through income, twenty percent of it is a deduction. Now there's a limitation on it, and one of the limitations is, if you get over a certain amount, then you could have a limitation of two and a half percent of the original purchase price of your property. Okay, so the original purchase price. So if you may have depreciated it by, you know, um, 50%, and you still get the original purchase price for that, for 10 years, you get the original purchase price. Mm -hmm. So that 2.5% can be a big, you know, can be a, actually can be a fairly big number. On, on your $10 million property, right, that's still $250,000. So that's a, that's a pretty big number as an additional deduction, and it's, it's basically free money. But when you th if you think about it this way, let's say you took bonus depreciation, so you're getting a huge amount of depreciation this year, which means that you, you have no income, right? You've got a loss from the property. Right. But next year, you're going to have a lot less depreciation. So next year, you may have that. You may actually may have taxable income. And at that point, you could take that 20% deduction. So it, it can still apply. I think, it, I think real estate investors, unless you're investing every single year, so you're always getting the bonus depreciation right. on the next property, unless you're doing that, you could easily end up getting that 20% uh, deduction. That was a last-minute ad that was actually a um, – mm. <laughs> they were doing a little horse trading there in the Senate mm -hmm. to get some to get uh, Mr. Corker to, to vote for the bill. Okay. And uh, they, they, gave, they, gave him the real, they gave it to real estate. It was not all originally in the bill. So it's a, it's a nice little benefit if you have net income. Now, you know, as you know, Tom, I mean, most you – know, you have a good tax advice and – and you, you're regularly investing in real estate, you're probably not going to have net income from, from real estate. Because mm -hmm, of the depreciation, depreciation so offset. High. But if you do, only 80% is going to be taxed. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's, uh, I don't think many, uh, many people know about that or understand it, as in, uh, in the investment world. Let's see. Um, let's, go, um, let's go off a little bit into uh, deep waters here, and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on... on um, how the tariff wars are going to affect your economy and how it's going to play out. You know, uh, uh, thanks for asking that. I don't normally get that question, but the, but the reality is a tariff is a tax, right? All right. So um, all, you know, all that's going on is posturing right now. And we, we have, and, and a lot of this actually is a result, I think, I think a lot of it is a result of the reduction in the corporate tax rate in the U.S. to 21%. You know, we are now a tax shelter nation in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. We have one of the lowest tax rates in the world now. So now it's, attract, so, now it's attracting uh, folks to uh, come here instead of leave here. Exactly, exactly. Because we used to have the highest, yes. and now we have the lowest. Mm -hmm. So, we're, so I it's, think it's, we're really low, see, it's really lower than most uh, first world countries? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because most, most countries are in that 25 to 30 percent range, mm -hmm. which was lower than our 35 percent range, 35 mm -hmm. percent, but a lot higher than our 21 percent. Is it having a positive impact yet? Oh, I don't think there's any question. I think what I th – now, my personal belief is that what I think what's going to happen is I think we're going to get more of the European and Asian investors actually setting up shop in the U.S., where they used to actually set up shop, you know, they just ship it in. Sure. I think we're going to see a lot more where they're here. And the, and the tariffs, of course, that's a do double whammy, right? Because now if, if you set up shop in the U.S., now you don't have the tariff either. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have a low corporate tax rate, but you also don't have a tariff. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that people forget is that we're one of the few com countries without a value-added tax. Okay, yep. And the value-added tax, I mean, for example, in Europe, it's upwards of 22%. Yeah, it's crazy. So, and it doesn't apply to exports. It only applies to imports, mm -hmm. right? So, 
I mean, so it's a lot more expensive to buy something from the U.S. than it is, say, for example, to buy something made in France, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're living in France. Well, you know, the, the idea of the tariffs, of course, you know, I'm not as opposed to them as a lot of people are. It's intended to try to balance it out a little bit, Look, right? we're just trying to make things equal here. Yep, trying to balance You guys it. have a tariff. You just call it a value-added tax. Sure. Sure. Yeah, it's amazing semantics and how the news spends it, right? Yep. Yep. So, so do you think this is going to um, play out positively for us? Uh, you already indicated we've got um, some some uh, corporations and entities moving here. Uh, any other way it's going to, uh, you think, uh, play out positively? Oh, oh, for sure. I mean, um, what, wasn't Apple just announced they're they're opening a big um, campus in Austin, Texas? Yep. Okay, I, that's got to be a that's got to be a result of the of the Chinese you know of the Chinese tariffs mm -hmm. and uh, and the low corporate tax rate here because you know Apple's been very aggressive in its tax planning. Yep. Um, hence, they're still I think they're still fighting this uh, this tax that the European Union has um, assessed on them in Ireland, which is just a ridiculous thing. But anyway. They're still finding that, but so we're we're seeing. I think we're, I think we will see it. I actually think so. I mean, if you look at, um, you know, it didn't get much play in the news, but the but the agreement with Canada and Mexico that uh, that the U.S. negotiated yep. um, appears to be a much better result than what we used to have under NAFTA. And then uh, you're seeing the Chinese are starting to soften on you know what they're doing. So. You know, I mean, the pressure, it, it, the pressure doesn't it, it, play it's risky, way, does but it? Yeah, the, I'll tell you what, we, we have not had good trade agreements for a very long yeah, time. Yeah. Well, the press doesn't uh, give that a very positive spin, do they? <laughs> Just saying. Well, not unless you're listening to Fox News. No. <laughs> OK. Um, uh, midterm elections. Uh, what's that going to what, what's the impact of that? Uh, from a tax standpoint, I don't think we're going to see much impact. I, I really don't, because the Senate is still firmly in the um, – in fact, the Republicans picked up seats in the Senate. So I, I don't think you're going to see much of an impact. Um, and the reality is is you would not see a, a major impact unless the Democrats won the White House in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, now, if, you, if the Democrats win the White House in 2020 um, – then I think what you're going to see is you're going to see, you, you you I I really think we're going to see an increase in the corporate tax rate. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a reversal. Of that. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the real estate stuff and you know the the bonus depreciation and so forth. I mean, you know the bonus depreciation. I, I probably shouldn't say it this way, but it's a bit of a boondoggle because um, you know you, you literally, Tom, you could you could buy a property for a million dollars, take the bonus depreciation, do a 1031 exchange in a year, sell it to me, and I take my bonus depreciation. I could do a 1031 and sell it in a year. And you could do this over and over mm -hmm. every year for the next 20 years. Yep. And you'd end up with bonus depreciation of way more than what the property costs in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's such an enormous benefit. It's going to be interesting to see what happens should we get a, uh, a a different party in in the White House? Mm -hmm. um, I think that there the the hope for that is maybe not as as strong as people may think it is, but um, we'll see. Okay, uh, take another break here. We have uh, Tom Wheelwright with us, uh, Rich Dad Advisor. We'll be back here in just a moment. Real Estate Radio Power Investing. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Power Investing. Streaming live on iHeart. Tune in and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, visit TomWilsonProperties.com. That's TomWilsonProperties.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Power Investing, Tom K. Wilson. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Power Investing. We are honored to have back with us today Tom Wheelwright, Rich Dad Advisor and uh, CPA and... Uh, a uh, very, uh, very well-known uh, advisor and uh, person in the media who's uh, been very, very um, influential and uh, considered uh, one of the uh, experts in the country on uh, tax advice. So, um, 
So, Tom, you've got a, uh, a, a new version of your best-selling book out, Tax-Free Wealth. Uh, tell us about that and uh, what's new in it. I presume it's going to talk a lot about uh, the tax changes and how they impact us and how you can take advantage of it. Oh, absolutely. So we did two things. Um, one is, of course, we updated it for the new law, and that's important. So it's actually a second edition. So it's, it had that much revision in it. The new law was just so impactful that we really had to, to do a, a pretty much an overhaul. It, you know, we didn't lose any of the guts of it. It's still the same story. It's still the same same book. Which, by the way, I think is a great uh, great book. I've uh, I, I love having uh, having read it and having a, a signed copy from you, Tom. Awesome, thank you. And um, but the other thing we did was we did an ebook. And the ebook actually goes over the top ten tax benefits of the of the new Trump tax bill. So the ebook is very specific, and it's about thirty page ebook. So um, and it comes free with the with 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 the new um, with the new edition of Tax Free Wealth. So uh, yeah, I mean it's it's actually doing really really well right now. The the new book is, and uh, just trying to you know we just happy to get it in the hands of more people because we're really. You know, we're we're just very. I'm just a very big believer in tax-free wealth. The, the, the tax law is is um, on purpose a series of incentives, and uh, that's its primary purpose is to incentivize certain activities in the economy um, or society. Tom, thanks for being with us again. Um, Always this, my pleasure, Tom. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Power Investing with Tom Wheelwright, uh, uh, Rich Dad Advisor and a um, long-time uh, authority in, uh, in taxes in the nation. We uh, invite you to go to TomWilsonProperties.com and sign up for our uh, newsletter that comes out on both uh, taxes, economy, uh, real estate investing. And also, uh, by signing up, you'll get uh, access to syndications in real estate, uh, commercial, and multifam properties for 50000 a share. That allow you to participate in investments that normally only large investors and institutional investors can invest in. So thank you for tuning in today to Real Estate uh, Radio Power Investing. And uh, Tom, thank you again for being on the program. And uh, remember, the only thing that matters is what you do next.